joining us now, Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick and Congressman Darrell Issa, both from House Foreign Affairs. You both heard Eber Lawrence's reporting there. Congressman Fitzpatrick, you're the ranking member. Why isn't the White House sanctioning Russia now? Why isn't it knocking Russia now out of the U.S. banking system? Why isn't it ramping up U.S. oil and gas production now to counter Russia? Because they're uh, oil and gas from Russia. Uh, Europe has become more dependent on Russia. We've given uh, Russia all the leverage in the world. We shut down the Keystone XL pipeline here at home. We open up Nord Stream 2, uh, connecting Russia to Germany. Uh, literally every single decision point has been a disaster. And now, Elizabeth, it's being reported, it breaks my heart because Ukraine was my last international assignment as an FBI agent before I uh, ran for Congress. We're now evacuating a second embassy, now Kiev, six months after we evacuated Kabul. If this is an Exhibit A about weak foreign policy, I don't know what is. We hear you, Congressman. Congressman Issa, to Congressman Fitzpatrick's point, embassy getting evacu evacuated, 130,000 troops on the move from Russia surrounding Ukraine. This country does not want to go to war. Polls show that. We just got out of a pandemic. The U.S. does not want to go to war. So how do how, oil is on the march. It's marching higher. It threatens to compound the inflation shock in the U.S. already at a 40-year high. To, to your thoughts and comments and what we ju what you just heard from Senator Cassidy and Congressman Fitzpatrick here. Well, first of all, at $95 a barrel, uh, this administration is beginning to achieve what they want, which is discouraging the use of all petrochemicals, including natural gas, something that was making America the envy of the world. When it comes to the fact that for the second time in six months we're evacuating an embassy, you really just have to go back to the basic principles of Ronald Reagan, which is you never find yourself in a war because you're too strong. That is exactly the, the reversal of the last year. We went from being a strong adversary and competitor to Russia to now, in fact, being a situation in which Joe Biden calls him up, spends an hour and five minutes on the phone with Putin, uh, has to beg for an early uh, phone call, and ultimately never said <clears throat> NATO will, in fact, stop you at the Ukrainian-Russian border. Instead, we've sent 5,000 troops to the Polish border. That sends a clear zone, which happens to be the size of Ukraine, yeah. or what President Biden called a minor incursion. You know, the, the declassified Pentagon report released last week that Biden was so dangerously indecisive about the exit from Afghanistan and badly botched it and delayed evacuations right around when Kabul fell. Let's listen to the White House press secretary tried to claim that the after action report did not exist and listen to the president saying to NBC he was, quote, rejecting the investigation report conclusions. Watch this. I just want to clarify, are you rejecting the conclusions or the, the accounts that are in this Army report? Yes, I am. So they're not, not true? I'm rejecting them. I think it's important for people to understand there was, there was no after-action report. What does the administration say to critics who are looking at these two events and questioning this administration's foreign policy approach? Who is questioning us? Give Plenty me Plenty of Republicans. Like who? I could name off any number of Republicans. I I'd love to know a name. Okay, well, you know, Congressman Fitzpatrick, why the pushback from Jen Psaki here? There's a Pentagon report, the Washington Post reported on a U.S. Army intelligence report, finding the White House botched it. And, you know, there's been medical examiner reports, forensic reports. Why continue to try to downplay that? Because they know they're in the wrong. And when the facts are not on your side, you spin. That's what she does every single day. That's what this administration has done. And by the way, uh, Elizabeth, it pains me to say this. I, I don't want to criticize our, our current administration. But my goodness, every single decision point they've made has been terribly damaging to our country, both from a domestic standpoint uh, and a foreign policy standpoint. And I will tell you, Elizabeth, when we win the majority back, myself and Daryl Dara will make sure on the Foreign Affairs Committee we do get to the bottom of everything that went wrong in Afghanistan. We're yeah. going to do the same on my Intelligence Committee as well. So you, gentlemen, you've been serving our country, right? The Pentagon standard, Congressman Issa, has been to first evacuate American citizens, then lawful permanent residents, then Afghans who aided the U.S. Watch how Harold Ford here say the White House violated a longstanding military creed. Watch this. 
you have a creed in the military, you leave no, you leave no uh, ally behind, you leave no soldier behind. We violated that, that creed. There's no doubt there were enormous mistakes made in this withdrawal, uh, in this exit. And I think the point that Trey makes that's most, uh, most compelling is that this was not a surprise. We knew we wanted to leave. But there's always elements of something on another side whenever you have a military exercise that goes right or goes wrong. This administration is going to have to deal with this. They'll have to, this legacy will be one that will be theirs. Your, your thoughts, Congressman Issa? Well, I served with uh, Congressman Ford from Tennessee, and he was a moderate Democrat who always spoke the truth, and he did it just now. Uh, it's very clear that the military was denied the ability to hold Bagram and to evacuate Americans, and instead they evacuated the embassy and themselves and then had to go back uh, to a small airport to try to get some of the people out. And most importantly, the botch was they took out people who were not entitled to, well, leaving thousands be, uh, behind who were entitled to. And uh, we're still trying to get some of those people out as you and I speak. So uh, this is not something you need an Army report, but there is a report, and the report shows what you would expect, which is bad decisions from the very top. Yeah, are we going to do it again in Ukraine? Losses. Is this going to happen again in the Ukraine, Congressman? Because recall Saki claiming no Americans have been, quote, stranded in Afghanistan. Recall how the Secretary of State said there were under 200 Americans remaining in Afghanistan. Turns out there are, the Senate Foreign Relations found estimated maybe 9,000 were trapped and left behind. Is this going to happen again in, Af in, in Ukraine? Congressman Issa, your final it, word. It, it absolutely is going to happen. There are a lot of dual nationals. Some of them are able to get out. Some of them have the same problem we had in Afghanistan, which is the American citizen can get out, but his or her family cannot get out. In many cases, can't even get over the Polish border. Okay. So we are going to leave Americans behind again. Well, this is and outrageous. We're going to leave Ukraine behind. That's our, it, You know what? We've never done this in the history of our country. We don't leave anybody behind ever. And this White House is now possibly going to do it twice with the disinformation, misinformation campaign on top of it. Okay, Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick and Daryl Issa, thanks and thank you for helping us to keep it real here on the evening edit. We're going to stay on the story and more on this.